I know you have me on the agenda a little bit later. I have a very brief um, trade policy and pharmaceutical update. I've brought some handouts and a, a draft resolution for you to consider. Um, and it's interesting, shortly after the branded pharmaceutical industry lost lawsuits challenging Medicaid formularies in three states, uh, restrictions on evidence-based price negotiations appeared in our bilateral free trade agreement with Australia. That was the first time that these restrictions were found in a free trade agreement. Um, I know that state leaders were unable to win explicit protections for Medicaid. And then a, a similar, we saw similar but more restrictive provisions come up in the Korea-U.S. free trade agreement. One and a half page briefing on these issues. Um, the, the areas that it looks, like, looks at are um, the pharmaceutical pricing chapters and free trade agreements and what this means to states. Um, it looks at the last Trade Promotion Act, um, which included a mandate that USTR negotiate restrictions to reference pricing. Um, this was the, the fast track process. So the fast track process itself had this built into it that um, USTR would need to, um, it would mandate that USTR negotiate restrictions to reference pricing for um, pharmaceutical industries. This, the act has since expired, but there's um, likely to be new pressure to include a similar provision in the new uh, Trade Promotion Authority Bill in the near future, and we're kind of just waiting for that to come up. But the reason for doing all of this now is because that USTR has something called the Special 301 Program, which is a program that effectively it pressures countries to restrict their, their drug pricing programs, among other things. Um, every year, the U.S. Trade Representative publishes a Special 301 Report, um, and it identifies countries that have weak intellectual property protection or that deny fair and equitable market access to United States persons that rely on intellectual property protection. In, in recent years, this report has actually been used to target, um, single out countries, um, namely, I think the last report singled out Japan, Canada, France, Germany, New Zealand, Taiwan, and Poland for administering unreasonable reference pricing or other potentially unfair reimbursement policies. Since state-operated Medicaid uh, preferred drug lists help control the cost of medicines for, uh, to help serve about 58 million low-income Americans, it, it is a bit uncomfortable that USTR um, opposes similar programs um, publicly this way. USTR is not a health regulatory authority. They have no expertise in, in public health matters, and they're taking action that threatens best practices in other countries and, and ultimately programs in the United States. So things that you could do, states can oppose inclusion of pharmaceutical chapters in free trade agreements. Um, you could oppose targeting of reference pricing programs in any new Trade Promotion Authority Act, and that should be coming up soon. And specifically, as I mentioned, this, this 301 report, um, you could participate in the special 301 comment process. Um, you know, every January, USDR submits comments for the 301 report from all interested parties. Maine could be an interested party in this case. I just learned yesterday that um, USTR will actually hold a public hearing um, after receiving comments on the Special 301 process. Um, I don't know that they've done that before, but it's a unique opportunity. So if this is an issue area that's very important to the state of Maine, it, it might make sense to submit comments and follow up with, with sending someone down to testify. I also have heard that there's a group of um, non-governmental organizations um, that are quickly getting together to put together a group statement that they would like to submit to the Special 301 process. And, and just to put it in very stark terms, uh, Representative Rotundo is you know, sitting up in the appropriations room every single, are they meeting today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, and most of us, uh, our committees have already met with the Appropriations Committee in joint hearings mm -hmm. um, yesterday on the supplemental budget, and they're going on all, um, all next week as well. And, you know, one of the proposals is to cut the Drugs for the Elderly program. Mm -hmm. 
that's in the budget right now. And that's under the current regime that where we are allowed to, uh, we don't set prices in, in Medicaid, but effectively we do a little bit because there's a required rebate system and it's all done through this preferred drug list. And it's very similar in many respects to, to the very things that these other countries are doing uh, in terms of the result anyway. The, it, it may not be, it's a more complicated procedure to get to the lower price, but in the end it requires that lower price. Uh, just like these other countries, including Canada, to which you know many people uh, from Maine are, are more familiar with uh, the pricing in Canada and the fact that Canadian drug prices are substantially lower than the United States. And I think the concern I have is that this um, trade policy is actually designed to get the other countries' prices up uh, as opposed to getting our prices down to their level or sort of evening it out so that everybody has access to affordable drugs. And that's the the consequence of carrying through some of these policies would be to restrict the ability of the states in this case to negotiate uh, drug prices in the Medicaid program uh, and, and in Maine we have other programs as well uh, where there is a level of rebates and negotiation um, such as the Maine RX program and I, that is a serious concern and I, I just have a strong feeling that the USTR is not really, and it's been an ongoing problem, that they just don't seem to be aware of the consequences. It's on this intellectual level, you're talking about intellectual property, but in terms of how it plays out in real life, it mm -hmm. means that it's keeping drug prices artificially high. And, uh, and that's a concern because we, we're not going to be able to balance our budget at all. Uh, if we can't get those rebates in Medicaid. I mean, it's bad enough right now in terms of trying to, to cover these costs. And if we, you know, we end up with these trade agreements all over the, you know, world with all these different countries that put these restrictions on them, those same restrictions apply to us in every single one of those agreements. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's one of the issues around trade is that most people have no under, you know, aren't even in the loop to know that these things are going on and that it affects them. I'm anxious to get to this to the governor's office okay. um, and to the commissioner of um, health and human services because I'm not sure that this is on their radar screen and it really should be. Um, and and I, I'm not sure that we're without additional information we're ready to take action today which is really unfortunate. Um, but if you know Dana if you can let us know what the timetable is mm -hmm. if you can um, let us know which organizations are taking action so that we can then get that information out to our organizations in this state. Mm -hmm. um, that would be really helpful and I think that's, that's something that we can do in terms of our role as educators.